Welcome to tonight's Charger Chat. My name is Megan Owens, and I am the Program Manager with Alumni Relations at UAH. And I am so excited to bring you our charcuterie board class tonight with Rebecca with R&B Charcuterie. And Rebecca is going to teach us how to make an amazing Instagram-worthy charcuterie board or just how to make a charcuterie board in general for those of us that don't know how. So Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. We are excited to learn everything from you. If I'm gonna to toss the ball over and it is now officially yours. Yeah, no, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Megan. Um, you know, we recently launched this business. So I just kind of wanted to introduce the business. We, um, it's a business with my sister. Uh, we do have a full-time job, so this is definitely a side, but uh, she's here. She doesn't love the camera as much as me, but she is, um, you know, my helper with everything. We do this together and, you know, just a, a shout out, right? You can, we're both moms too. So, you know, as, as women, we want to, to show that you can uh, balance everything in your life. So this is kind of our hobby something that we get our creative outlet out and um yeah very excited to do this teach just kind of basics right because i know <laughs> this was a new when it's new you're overwhelmed you don't know how to put things on the board you end up wanting to show something and then probably just eat half of it and uh call it quits so <laughs> um we want to start just with you know, wine is welcome. I'm going to go ahead and serve some wine to make it relaxing. I'm very open. Um, have your video if you want to or not. The plan, how we'll do this. I'll kind of go through. I know Megan sent you a shopping list and we also went through and um, I think you sent them links. So I did. Uh, I am using the links that we use, but you know, whatever you have in your house, honestly, you know, I have these keyboards I use. And once you've mastered, you know, some people like rectangular, square, round, whatever you have in your house, right? I kind of chose something basic kind of for like a date night that you could have. Oh, go ahead. Do you hear a question? No? Okay. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I just chose kind of a three cheese, two meat uh you know spread here that you can enjoy at home with um friend yourself or your husband right um so we'll go ahead and get started i will probably what i'll do how i approach a board um and i'll have to grab the phone here and zoom it in for y'all i'll have to show you my setup here um, so I like to grab and kind of position everything that I will be using that way, you know, you kind of do a little prep work beforehand. So, and I also try to, I know, um, I used to live in Huntsville. And so I know I asked Megan, what are the, um, stores y'all have? Because it also depends. Um, I'm excited to hear you will have Trader Joe's because actually a lot of my products I get from Trader Joe's as you can see here. But what I did um, to accommodate is I know you have Aldi. I use actually a lot of stuff from Aldi. So, you know, all of this basically is from there. It's um, affordable and nice. So, you know, charcuterie doesn't have to be super expensive, right? You really get a an, an, uh, feeling of what you like. Um, what I will teach you here is how to cut some of these cheeses, right? Because that's kind of a big step there. So we've got our cheese line up there. I have some tools I'll recommend uh, for, you know, just really cheap. I got this off Amazon and it's a lifesaver. And then, you know, I'll recommend also how to assemble our meats because that's also a big thing. And then honestly, all of this is just add-ons, fruits, olives, but, you know, you kind of get a feeling of what you want and put it, you know, what, what you like. So anything you don't, don't worry, take it off. We'll adjust. Just give me an, a question here. So um, I use, and I, these were kind of two on containers, but uh, you know, you could play around with what you have at your house. Again, I kind of just chose things that were easy to send y'all links to. Um, so this is where we'll have our jam. This is where we'll have our hummus, um, our honey. I had a, a, a little container 
glass container in the class, but since we're probably going to eat afterwards, I kind of just did this. And this is a technique. Um, I use this one to create our salami rows. So more to come on that. So I will go ahead and get started with the cheeses. So shout out uh, to everyone. Are you following? Um, do we want to start? I want to make sure everybody's got, I'm going to go ahead and start. I, I said manchego or um, gruyere. And again, this was material I got from Aldi. So hopefully everybody got a chance to find it. Um, I'm going to say a note about um, rinds because uh, I just want to make a point. For manchego, um, gruyere, you don't want to eat this. So we're going to cut it off. Later, I will talk about brie. Brie is a cheese that you can eat it. So you can um, enjoy it how we'll enjoy it in this class, or you could put it in the oven with figs and jam and enjoy it that way. So just a little note there that some of the rinds, please don't eat them. Anything that's wax-based, do not eat. All right, and so with this, you wanna kind of cut this is a nice piece, right? Because as you can see, it's already shaped because I wanna get a shape that's triangular here, kind of thin that we can lay out as you saw in the class, or sorry, in the picture. And I hope, Megan, you sent them all a picture, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, maybe at some point you could, maybe, I don't know if you could share your screen or something for them to look at it if they're not, um, you know, don't have it visible. So I just go ahead and grab, and you know, we just start cutting and I'll, we'll use the one in the class or sorry, in the video, but I'll also show you other ways you can lay out. And Shea was a very diverse cheese that you can display it in your board. So many different pretty ways. As you can see, this is kind of a thicker cut. Um, and that's what's nice about this cheese. You could also do thinner cuts um, for this one, since we're only including you know, a couple of pieces, I'm going to go ahead and cut um, about five pieces, okay? And I'll open it up if anybody has any questions. It's about a fourth of an inch that you try to cut. All right. So now I've got my five pieces. I'm not going to use this one because it's got the rind, so we're just going to discard that. And we're going to bring it back here. And I hope I remember right. I kind of do each board a little different each way, but uh, I'm pretty sure we had it here. So you kind of start off and then as you'll see, we will have to adjust. So this is one method, right? You can kind of lay it out that way. And you know, it it's, looks very pretty, right? Um, another way that I wanted to show you that I you've maybe seen a lot displayed is you kind of lay them out um, opposite to each other. And you and it, you see the thicker slices makes it look really pretty. So this is another way that you can lay out your manchego or any type of this. Um, the Gruyere also works the same. Okay, any questions so far before we move on? All right, we'll go ahead and move to our goat cheese. Uh, back to our cheese station here. So you want to try to have like, a, like that's more of a harder cheese. And then you want to have more of like a semi-soft or a soft cheese um, with your board. So you have a little bit of variance in texture. Um, and that's why we pull the Gruyere. And you also want to have a little bit of balance on the taste buds too. So... Manchego tends to be a little bit um, more on the, uh, it's pungent, but not too pungent. Um, and it's more on the um, savory side, while your, um, this goat cheese is more on the sweeter side because it's coated on cran with cranberry cinnamon. And I'll zo zoom in because there's a couple of choices with the goat cheese. Of course, you could get your regular goat cheese. Um, goat cheese, I feel, at least for our clients, it's either you absolutely love it or you absolutely hate it. <laughs> so it is a distinct taste, right? So definitely try out. But we've discovered that some people, like my husband actually does not like goat cheese, but this cranberry cinnamon variation, he loves. So, you know, again, like my sister said, just 
play around with the different cheeses and different tastes. But I've discovered that almost all of our clients have loved this. Um, so just FYI, there's another one, I think at Aldi, that's a blueberry vanilla, um, that that's a really good, good um, taste too. Um, let me talk about this little tool. So this is a cheese slicer. I think it's eight or $9 on Amazon and I'll send the link to Megan, but this is a lifesaver because especially for this type of cheese that's so soft, if you try to cut with a knife, it kind of sticks to it, it dissembles and it, you know, it just doesn't, the appearance is not as pretty anymore. And I can show you here just so we see the difference, but you see this, you just, it kind of slices real well picks up and you know we can have our pretty slices here you'll see in a second and this is pretty straightforward right it's round you want to cut your slices i you know i would say also know, about a fourth yeah. of an inch as well so you can get that um the fruit or like the um the sweetness um, and so this one, I remember we place, let me just place him here. We want to place him here and such a pretty color, right? Because you also want to play with the colors in your board that I like to display it right in front, right? As you can see, it's, um, you know, I kind of put it where it's pretty visible. So I think I chose the two ends here of our plate um, just because again, the colors are so pretty. And I actually should have done this one first because I think the manchego goes on top of it. But we'll adjust. And we'll put the last one here. All right, so I hope everybody's still following me. And Do we need to pause or are, is everybody pretty cut off? And okay. what I'll do is just a quick. Um, oh, you yes, got a sweet, here, right? got a, um, sweet little thumbs up from a couple people. So y'all are doing okay. great. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> and I am washing my hands here and my tools just because we're going to switch. Um, you know, that goat cheese, remember, was a little kind of sticky, as some of y'all can probably tell. So I am washing my hands and my tools and I'm gonna use another cutting board too. Mm -hmm. um, here, give me a sec, sister's gonna give me another one. Um, but while we're waiting there, like I said, uh, you can kind of rearrange your manchego here. Um, as I remember, Megan, you'll probably have to spot check me because again, I kind of, I do my boards kind of creative there, but. I want to make sure we stick to the picture, but I'm pretty sure that's where it was. No, 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 no. You're doing great. Rebecca, we do have a question real quick. Yeah, um, go ahead. Do you show how to cut the goat cheese with a regular knife if, in case they don't have a cheese slicer? Yeah, I can do that. Um, let me go ahead. I have a little piece left. So, I mean, honestly, it's pretty much, and I'll grab my sister. Um, you'll see it's, it's pretty difficult, um, just the sense that, you know, it kind of sticks to it, but you know, you really just have to hold it. And that's why my recommendation, because as you can see, right, it's, yeah, I mean, it works, but it's not ideal, right? So that's why I recommend that tool. Um, like I said, it's eight bucks. It's a lifesaver and it helps and it's useful for all cheeses, to be honest. The harder ones, we use a knife for it to be easy, but you know, you could tell the difference. If you do have to use a cheat, uh, the knife though, I would say clean your knife between each cut and that way it doesn't stick so often into your, um, knife and, um, and that, and you also don't, um, I guess, transpose some of the, fruit, yeah. some of the, the fruit into the, um, core of the cheese. So I would say every time, just kind of wet it, clean it, and then slice again. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you both so much. All right. So we will switch gears here. And I think the same goes for the brie. I will show you both, but, um, oh yeah, I already washed it. My bad. Where is it? Oh, here it is. 
Um, so we've got our brie here. Uh, like I said, with the brie, uh, we can eat it. So some a lot, we get that question a lot, right? You see um, this, you can, it's very, it's safe to eat. So you don't have to worry about um, taking it off, right? So with the brie, again, I'm gonna use my, my um, tool here, my cheese slicer. And what I do with the brie or any round cheese, this can work. I think there's a Gouda um, round cheese at Aldi. Do you remember any other round cheese? Really, yeah, anything that's cut round, this is a good method to follow, right? So we cut it in half. And again, you can do this with your knife. And I think brie is a little more cooperative than the goat cheese. Um, and I'll leave this half so we can kind of try it out with the knife. But you basically want to do a half. And then after your half, you want to lay it out and cut it in thirds, right? So just kind of feel it out. I know it by memory, but if you want to kind of just, before you cut, try to do some lines there, um, you can do that. So we're going to cut our thirds. And Brie is... So now that we've got our thirds, we cut one more time in half. So each of them, we're going to cut. It's a little bit of geometry here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, we're doing a little bit of class after college, huh? Um, so I'm just going to cut these. All right, so now we've got our six pieces. And before I lay them out, let's try it out with a knife and see. I think, like I said, Bree's a little bit more cooperative, but um, we found it's a little better with the, this, right? So same method for those that kind of missed. We do in three. So see, it comes out. It comes out pretty nicely with the cheese. It's just, again, you just have to clean your knife. If you're yeah, cutting see it quite often, sticks. it starts to stick. Um, so it works much better than the goat cheese. Let's see, it kind of sticks to your knife. Uh, the cheese slicer is nice because it just cuts and you don't have to go through this, but all right. And I'll teach you kind of a method if you want to use the whole, for this board, we only use half of it, but I can teach you if you had a larger board, you can use it all and place it kind of the same way that I'm about to. So I'm going to bring it here, move this a little bit. Take a sip of wine. Hopefully you all are joining me. <laughs> I love that. All right, so I'm gonna rearrange here a little bit because we wanna place it here. Um, so a nice method with the brie to kind of highlight, you know, cause it's got a nice little white part. So I just kind of started off laying it, as you can see with the sticky part on top. And then I go ahead and lay the other ones, almost like you start doing a like a flower. Flower. Yeah, flower slash like, you know, an arc. Um, so you just start laying it on top of them. And you want to look just for aesthetics. There's a part that's nicer than the other one. Like you see this white part's a little nicer. So I always lay that on top. Um, and then you just start laying it, right? We're going to do six pieces. Right? So the, the sixth part is... And so you kind of just do like a, a half circle and I just start again, rearranging it. Um, and then the point, right, is for you to put a little ramp in there with your honey. So that, because brie pairs excellent with honey. Brie is a cheese, I will say, again, it's one of those that some people, most people love, but you have to pair it with a jam, honey, something to elevate the taste of the brie, because if not, it's, how would you describe it? Kind of, it's kind of sour. Yeah. So um, you, that's why you need something sweet in order to um, balance the sourness of the brie. 
Um, and I wanted to, if you were to do the whole right, you would just keep going with your circle. And I'm going to rearrange this a little bit just to display it right. Um, and so you would just kind of keep going and then you play around with your flower so that it displays prettier. And I try to lay this on top. Right, and your last piece would be there. So it kind of there. And then if for aesthetics, right, you could place um, a couple of fruit or something in the center to make it look a little bit prettier, maybe um, some um, rosemary or something like that here. But just to show you an example, if you had the round and you wanted to use it all, you can do this as well. All right, we're almost done with the cheeses. Do I have any questions? And I'm probably just gonna leave it like that. We can enjoy the honey here with my sis on the side. No questions. So I hope everybody's following along and not got lost in wine. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think you are doing great. I don't see any questions, but Rebecca, I have to say my favorite part so far is those that have cameras on, watching them um, put their boards together and then watching them munch on the extras. Yeah, um, so I'm far. about to. I'm about to. <laughs> I was I was about to pick a piece of brie. <laughs> yeah, you'll have That's to bring right. the crackers out so we can start munching. But okay, so from what I remember, and again, I might move it back that way we follow the class. Here I am trying to get creative on y'all. Um, oh, we'll go ahead and continue with the meats. Let me move these back to where we had them. I think that's the six, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move those back. Okay, so now we will start with our meats. Does anybody have a preference if we start with our prosciutto or our salami? If not, I'll guess I'll. I would say the salami because yeah, it take takes the, the most time. Most time because of the Can you open this for me. Mm -hmm. now, let me go ahead and. Crap. So as you see, my method always is lay out your cheeses first, and then we start laying out our meats. And then after that, we do our fruits. It's kind of add-ons, right? Because you want to almost cover the holes, right? But you want your main, um, you know, your, your, your mains, right, are your cheeses and your meats. So you definitely want to make sure those are displayed first. And then you just kind of start rearranging and filling the spots. So that's kind of my method there and i will recommend this because we actually um bought this there's a um, italian dry salami but it's spicy and it is very delicious i like it much more than the original one um so if you do go to aldi and you like a little kick go ahead and pick this spicy one because it is really good all right so with our meats i'm going to go ahead and bring here and so this is a method I use for the flour just to lay it out. So what I start to do um, is you start grabbing your salami and kind of laying it on the side of your um, container. And so you almost place the half and then kind of go around the circle. So you do your half. And then you keep going. And I would say with your meats, if you can um, just get them out like 15 minutes before you're preparing, that way they're, uh, this sounds, they're kind of oily, but they're, they're um, better to work with. If they're right off the fridge, they, they're harder to accommodate into the flour. So that's another kind of trick. So we've got our first circle there. And then you start laying another layer, right? Kind of in the middle so that you could see these two are almost like our petals. And so your next circle will start kind of in the middle. Um, and then you kind of keep going the same way, right? The halves, half. And there's actually lots of different methods to do flowers. This is my favorite, uh, but I think there's a TikTok <laughs> version with the champagne glass. Um, the only thing I'll say with that one, it, it kind of falls apart in your board very easily. 
So um, that's why I didn't want to teach you all that. But it's very famous. You could definitely check it out in Instagram or TikTok. Um, it, it, it looks very pretty. So I think I layered two more um, out, outside the, you want to leave a little hole there. And I'm going to teach you another method um, to do flowers. So we'll use this and that'll be kind of our hole here that we'll fill in our center. Um, so you want to grab your salami and fold them in half. And this is another method to do flowers that's actually a little easier. Um, then you go ahead and grab another one, lay it in the center of the first one, right? And then you keep going, you grab another one, fold it in half, lay it on the center. And we're gonna do, I wanna say about five and we'll see how that fits. So the fourth one, and then we've got our fifth one. And then what you do is you start rolling it. So you, you start rolling it from the end. And when you hit that second one, make sure you grab it. So you see how it came. So you wanna grab it and keep rolling. And then you, you wanna keep rolling, grab the third one, keep rolling. Grab the fourth one, keep rolling. And then as you see, you've got your little center, a little mini rose there. All right, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it here. And then what I start to do is I just start to kind of fluff, right? That way it looks a little bit more like the picture. Um, I just start to fluff what we already worked on. This is optional. I just like to fluff for it, again, to look a little bit better. Um, our little center here, we fluff, but not too much, right? You don't want it to fall apart. So I just kind of fluff that last one, but that's the result of your flower. Any questions? Did I go too fast there? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly wash my hands again. Before we move on to the second meat. You want to wash your hands between touching meats because you don't want to transfer the flavor of one meat to the other. Um, and because the meats are kind of, you know, oily and sticky, it will easily transfer. So we always wash our hands between handling meats. And definitely after handling meats, we wash our hands. <laughs> yeah, and I don't like, to be honest, I don't like also, um, if for some reason I need to rearrange I want my hands to be, you know, bring in COVID, but now I wash my hands a lot with uh, making these boards because I don't like the cheeses also to mix with the meats, even though probably you're going to do that. But some people, for example, don't love prosciutto. You don't want your cheese tasting like prosciutto, right? Because some people might just pick off the cheese and not do the meats, right? So we want to be careful with that. If you want to open this. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to take a chance here and look at videos and see if I see anyone with boards here. All right, let's go grab here. All right, so our prosciutto, um, to be honest, um, one of my favorites, I want to say our Costco one is my favorites because these are very thin slices. I like a little bit of the thicker slices. So if you can maybe at Publix or um, I know you have Costco too. The only thing is like it comes with a four pack, but you could still use the other meats. Um, we can maybe do another class and I'll use Costco material. But this one's a little thin, not my favorite, but we'll make it work. So what I do is I grab the prosciutto um, you try your best for it not to fall apart, but what you do is you kind of form a ribbon. So you start um, with the end and then you start folding it and then bringing it back, folding it and then bringing it back for it to kind of form a ribbon. And so you want to place it 
that way and we'll do another one here. And so I like to use some support, like if I've got my ramkin or in, you know, I kind of do this one last. Um, but as you can see, it kind of lays out nicely if you try to do kind of a ribbon with it. We'll do another one here to show you um, again. And you wanna, once you're taking it off, you wanna be very careful to not dissemble it because it's very easy, especially if it's thin slices. So we're gonna go again. You grab it from the end, you start like folding, fold again, fold again, and then you grab it by the center and then you start almost fluffing it, right? So you have a little center. And so I think, I don't even know where I placed the other one. We're gonna place it here again to have some support. And then you kind of just play with it, try to fluff it um, so that it's displayed that way. Any questions with the prosciutto? That one's a little easier. You almost have to um, readjust, but the trick is to fold, 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 and then grab it by the center so you form a real ribbon. If somebody wants me to do another one, I can. You probably have to do a couple more, huh? No, I think we still have all our fillers. So okay. if I have to do one later, we will, but okay, we're good. I'm gonna wash my hands again. Just a lot of beer. <laughs> Rebecca, while you're while you're doing that, I'm going to update you on a couple of chats. Um, okay. One person said that they love the salami flour, so I think it's definitely been a good thing to show how to do that. And cool. then another person said that they that that was really cool that they wondered how to get the pretty ruffle look with the prosciutto. And I agree. We talked about this. I normally tear mine, and it does not look pretty. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's right on top of each other. So. Thank you for showing us the proper way to put prosciutto on a charcuterie board. <laughs> Good. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's a struggle, right? Like I said, if you can find thicker slices, the ribbons look amazing, right? Because it, it's hard to juggle because they kind of fall apart. So um, just kind of play with it. Look at your local shops and hopefully you'll find a, a good find there. So now's the easy part, to be honest. Now we, we did the harder um you know rearranging uh you kind of want to place the fruits you like i've already pre-cut them actually my sister did she's my main helper here um so with your grapes what you want to do is usually we use scissors for this you want to grab cute little pieces um you can use red um you know green the candy grapes uh so many variations of grapes uh but the key thing is to grab pieces um, where you can kind of cut here and, you know, you have a nice bunch. Um, that way it's, you know, you just place the bunch and you don't try to place multiple grapes, right? Like one by one. And I like to flip, right? Because you've got this side that's got this, the stem. I like to flip it so that we see the majority of the grapes, but it still looks cute to show some stem. Um, so I, again, will place the grapes, again, maybe I'm off record here and getting a little more creative, but I know we had two pieces of grapes. I'm going to place my other one here. Um, and so you kind of, again, play with your fruit. And now we're just filling up the board, right? So you want to fill it up, you play with your colors, um, play with your flavors. We picked these grapes because, again, I was trying to stick to Aldi. I will say... Um, for my blueberries and raspberries, I really like Aldi. Their grapes um, are not my favorite. Again, Costco, I love their grapes. However, obviously it's a big <laughs> um, you know, container of grapes, so you may not want to do that. Um, HEB here locally also does great uh, with their grapes. They're just a little more plump and bigger. Um, but I think you all have a Kroger, you told me right in public. So try there, see what you like, because you can at least get the amount that you want. Um, so, so that's what I like too, right? Because you only use somewhat of a small amount, especially if you're just doing date night. Um, so that's another detail with charcuterie. Unfortunately, right, some of the cheeses come in bulk. So 
I would pick up probably if you're just doing it for your, you know, significant other or friend or yourself, try to stick to um, Aldi actually does a great job of, you know, their, their sizes are pretty doable and you don't waste a lot of material and it doesn't get too expensive because that's one of the big things with charcuterie, right? Um, then we're going to move on to our blueberries or sorry, blackberries. Um, and again, just filling up our board. So we're going to place them here. I think that's where I placed them. Yeah, because the raspberries go here. We had olives here. I'm going to place some, some more here just to, again, give it some color. Um, and then you want to, you know, kind of lay them on top of each other for it to, again, look prettier. You can see how I laid some on top. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and put our raspberries, put them here. And again, I, I like to just lay them on top of each other and it not be perfectly symmetrical, but kind of looks nice. And then our olives, if they're spokes. And these olives I got from um, Aldi, as you can see, they're a little smaller. Uh, the others that we usually use, again, are from Costco. For us, it's beneficial because it's a business. But, you know, if you love olives, um, I do like the bigger ones in my opinion, but these work well too. I mean, the taste is the same. So we kind of lay them out. Just again, aesthetically, the bigger ones look a little bit prettier, but this works. Okay. So as you can see, it's mostly full, right? But we've, so with the last spot here, what I like to do um, is use nuts. And these are kind of, we use nuts, you can use flowers, you can use, you know, garnishes, ro rosemary. Um, yeah, thanks for that. So we also use these chocolates. Um, you you want to give the, the a little bit of sweet, a little bit of, of you know, the nut flavor too, um, kind of in the end as add-ons, right, to your board. Um, and it tastes amazing, to be honest. They really give that taste that you um, are wanting to. So that's how I really fill my kind of last holes that you see here. So we see a little hole there. Here's where I can place some of my chocolates. Again, I might have diverged from the original board, but y'all get the point. And chocolate cleanses your palate. So in between meats and cheeses, you can have a chocolate glass of wine and the chocolate pairs really well with wine as well, Yeah, which I, we tend to have with the charcuterie. So um, chocolates are a great accent to your board. And also I will add my strawberries. Again, Aldi, not my favorite. They're a little bit smaller, but you know, they work. Um, and so I kind of place them here. Again, really to cover your holes, right? And make it uh, play with the colors, look a little bit prettier. So I kind of added those two there. And we're almost at our end here. Now what I'm gonna do is fill in our um, jams. And actually I think the jam was there, but we'll go ahead. Uh, for the dips, we cho chose hummus, uh, but you know, you could choose tzatziki. Uh, my chef here, my sister does these amazing dips. She does an avocado cilantro. It really depends on what you kind of are pairing it with. We thought with this board, hummus would be the best. This is kind of a pine nut uh, flavor that we chose. So, um, and I'll teach you another kind of method here once we place everything, but what I do is I grab the back of the spoon and at the end, I kind of do a circular motion and that way it kind of displays the, the hummus a little bit better. I probably have to play with it, but um, that's just a little method there that kind of brings that circular. Um, Almost like a whipped, yeah. um, whipped um, texture. Um, same kind of same thing with our jam. So I think the one in the picture we used this amazing one. It's a uh, it was a what, apple pecan. It was an um it was an apple pecan butter. So with jams with preserves, you do want to, you know, kind of um spend a little bit on the on the good side. You want to get a good jam. Um, your butter jams are phenomenal because they're just um they're um more bold and more dense in flavor. Um you, citrus jams are really nice, but um, 
with a brie, you probably want something a little bit more dense. So um, this particular one is actually a homemade jam. It's a mango jam, though it's homemade. Um, but we also had this, we also have this fig butter that um, pairs very well, right? Um, with your brie. Uh, uh, I will say I didn't recommend any at Aldi because we tried one and yeah. the jams there weren't my favorite. Again, because as my sister pointed out, I think you want to spend a little bit more on your jams uh, for it to pair well with your cheeses, right? But um, probably Kroger, I think, has good choices and Publix. Um, so yeah, just kind of explore there what you love. We definitely have our favorites here, um, but you know that, that'll be kind of your option. So we're pretty much done, as you can see. I think with the hummus, just putting like a little bit to um, make it prettier, we do do the... Um, Oh, you the can, olive oil. Yeah. yeah, you can yeah. drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil and then sprinkle some paprika and that'll bring out some of the flavor or um, with um, some of our bigger boards, what I do is I actually roast garbanzos. So you can um, take some garbanzos out of a can and then put some um, oregano, garlic, salt and um, olive oil and kind of and toss them and then lay them on a sheet pan and then you can put it um, at 500 degrees in the oven and roast them. And then you can top that on top of your um, hummus and it's just absolutely delicious. So see, we just added a little bit of olive oil and um, some paprika and you're good to go. Again, aesthetics gives it a nice taste too. Um, so yeah, any questions? I did it in 45 minutes, I'm proud of myself. Uh, didn't go over, <laughs> but yeah, I, I want to open it up to Q&A about anything, really. Any any questions y'all have, maybe not about the specific board. Let me go ahead and switch here. Oh, oh okay. So, Rebecca, there's um, a couple of screens are showing you their boards. I don't know if you can oh, see them, but how um, cute. those that have attended, if you want to share your board, please do so. And then we had a suggestion earlier, if you want to take a picture of your board, um, Please, you, yeah. yeah. Let me go ahead and write in chat. If you can tag us on social media, so we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, a like goes a long way. Let me tell you, running a business is crazy. Uh, so just social media. Um, so I'll go ahead and we are R and Bree Charcuterie and Instagram. And oh, let me check here. I, I wish we could send links, but. Let me play around with this, but it would be awesome if y'all could, you know, take a pic, tag us. This is uh, amazing, right? This is actually our first virtual class. So let me know how we did. Um, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. You can enjoy um, and, and yeah, definitely learn some things. Uh, once I do go to Huntsville, I want to set up maybe a little pop-up shop or something and get to actually meet at all of you, but um, let, yeah, let me go really quickly and just double check if I could send you the link. Um, oh, and then I have some amazing comments for you in the chat. Um, one of them is, I didn't know that chocolate cleanses the palate. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's a thing to know. When you're um, eating this, it's, it's a perfect excuse, right? Any, any excuse to eat chocolate. Yes. Um, there's a comment that the board is gorgeous, so pretty. And then there is a question for you. Um, yes. Would you serve crackers on the side with this board? Yes. So I, for this board, just again, to teach you tips, um, I didn't include crackers, but, you know, we definitely, um, you can choose any type. Usually, again, at Aldi, you get this one that has a variety of like, six different ones that we really enjoy. Um, you can, and let me go ahead and switch back. What I do is I like to place them almost on the side here and we layer the crackers. Um, 
or you know you place them here again next time we can do one with crackers incorporated but what i usually do is i try to fill up my holes with crackers so either place them on the side you know you could if there's a little hole there's um again trader joe's but once you get trader joe's get the fig and olive crackers um they're <laughs> amazing and you can kind of place them in your holes here um but yeah i mean the crackers really are an add-on for me you beautifully display it this way and then usually right in this is a smaller board, but if you've got, you know, your, your own board, you can definitely lay them here. Um, or if you've got, you know, the, the, the other ones, you can lay them in your holes is my suggestion with crackers. Let me see if I could check out chat here. Um, oh, I think I'm so glad. Yes, there's so many compliments. They're so sweet. But one of the things I love is that the tips make all the difference. And thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Dr. Adams said, this is great. My husband and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Awesome. And, um, Wendy, yes, we did record tonight's chat because I know there were actually a couple people, myself included, that are going to get the supplies later and build the board later. So we will record this. We will send it out to attendees and we will also put it on um, our YouTube channel so that you can go back and watch this with Rebecca and she will walk you through it again. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll just send me the link, Megan. I'd love to watch myself, even though it's so awkward to see yourself, right? <laughs> After the fact. Uh, but yeah, enjoy the beautiful board. Now you've got dinner, get some wine out. Um, thank you to everyone. And my sister here, she'll come also. Thank you um, to to everyone yeah send us the recording tag us on instagram or facebook and i hope everybody enjoyed it and learned oh you're getting several rounds of applause and thumbs Aww. up and the thank yous keep coming in the chat um someone's going to do it this weekend with their son and daughter-in-law awesome um, so that'll be fun to do together um the only one home what have i done <laughs> <laughs> and look forward um if you follow us our plans are to host more of these we probably are going to do like themed ones for easter christmas valentine's um this was honestly you know really good for us as well so we want to thank you uh, so yeah look out for them if you liked us we can um you know hopefully you'll join in other classes Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much. Um, oh, okay. One more question. I'm sorry. They keep coming yeah. in and they're just so sweet. No, but, I'm, I'm um, here. One of our guests participated in tonight for their third year anniversary. So congratulations. Oh, Happy anniversary yeah. to all. Thank you for Congrats. spending it with us. That'll be a very <laughs> nice surprise. <laughs> you can thank claim you, you did it all yourself. <laughs> And again, Rebecca, lots of thank you still coming in. So many compliments. You did amazing. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. I hope you felt like you were back in Huntsville, even if it was just for a little bit. We yes, yes. I definitely miss that today. town. It's a very pretty town. I really enjoyed uh, my time there. I lived there two years. So remind me what the, I was trying to remember. It's almost like a shopping center. Um, what were the stores there? A lot of Bridge little street. Which one? But Bridge Street or yes, Low Mill? Bridge Street. Bridge Street. That's right. I loved going there. I don't know how much has changed. Um, actually, it was uh, when was I moved probably seven years ago. So wow. Yeah, it's been a while. We will definitely have to come back a lot. Yes, I will, and I'll you contact you, Megan. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Charger fans, thank you so much for joining us all. We appreciate each and every one of you. Go enjoy your cheese and your meat and your fabulous board. And I hope you all have a wonderful night. Thank you again, Rebecca. We hope you have a good night as well. Bye. Bye, everyone.